The meteoric rise of Hindu nationalism has jolted India's secular democracy. The RSS wanted, first of all, to assert a Hindu Rashtra, so there should be a Hindu constitution. It's given rise to a weaponized form of Hinduism, saffronizing its multi-faith society. I think Mr. Modi's greatest achievement is that he has weaponized Hinduism. It's forced the US government panel to suggest India be put on a religious freedom blacklist. What the US is doing is absolutely wrong. With some downgrading India as an electoral autocracy. They are fascists sitting in their studio, profiling people, making it us versus them. Can secular forces in the country revive its multi-faith society? December the 6th, 1992. More than 150,000 extremist Hindus surround the historic Babri Mosque in Ayodhya, Uttar Pradesh. They are led by the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sang, a paramilitary right-wing volunteer organization. Outnumbered, security officials watch as the Hindu mob goes violent in an attack that lasts for six hours. Citing contested archaeological findings, the attackers claim the mosque was built over the birthplace of the Hindu deity Ram. The 500-year-old historic mosque is turned into rubble. The then Prime Minister of India dubs the attack an open war on the secular fabric of India. It could not be spontaneous. I am quite sure that uh, it was pre-planned. This business of actually undoing 500 years of history in order to restore a glory that goes back perhaps 2,000 years, this, is, this kind of talk is, again, uh, something which has witnessed the weaponization of history against a minority community. A muscular form of Hindu nationalism, or Hindutva, backed by the RSS, emerges from the ashes of Babri Mosque. In the classic Hindutva dream scenario is that, that you take all the divisions of Hindu society and they hate the Muslims so much that they will be united. Hindutva is not Hinduism. It is to use Hinduism as a political weapon for strategy, for transformation, for mobilization. Hindutva's impact is felt 10 years later when India's secular soul is violently shaken once again. 27th of February, 2002. A train attack in Godra leads to the deaths of 58 Hindu pilgrims. There was a set of car sevaks who went from Gujarat to Ayodhya and on their return, there was a riot, they were attacked. That whole train bogey was burnt. And obviously, when such thing happens, when a set of uh, more than 50 Hindus get burnt in a riot, there will be some reaction. The accident, 
sparks fires of communal violence across the state of Gujarat. More than 1,000 people, mostly Muslims, die in the massacre. As then Chief Minister of Gujarat, Narendra Modi's slow response is heavily criticized by some. He had just become chief minister. He was a man with no administrative experience. The BJP felt it was best to let that anger run its course, and the administration was told not to protect Muslims. Views are divided on which one was actually the real picture. In 2005, Narendra Modi is denied a United States visa for failure to stop a series of deadly riots by Hindus against the Muslim community. A horrific uh, set of violent events happened, and they were done with official sanction uh, headed by none other than Narendra Modi. The saffronization of Indian politics takes a transnational turn. Two years later, on the 19th of February, 2007, a train traveling from India to Pakistan explodes. It kills 40 Pakistanis, amongst others. RSS terrorist Swami Asim Anand confesses to the attack. Asim Anand intends to respond to every Islamist terror attack with a bomb for a bomb policy. I think Mr. Modi's greatest achievement is that he has weaponized Hinduism. But how do you come to a country and tell 85% of the population and make those people feel that they've somehow been discriminated against because of their religion and it's time for them to come out and assert themselves as Hindus? <laughs> In 2012, Narendra Modi is cleared of complicity in the Gujarat massacre by the Supreme Court of India. The then Chief Minister, the present Prime Minister, was the Chief Minister at the time. He swung into action immediately and the riots were brought under control. So that is where the court found that there is no evidence for all the allegations that were made against the then Chief Minister. Narendra Modi's popularity reaches its climax in 2014, when he's elected as the Prime Minister of India. As a lifelong RSS member, Modi's campaign is backed by a six million strong RSS, India's largest volunteer organization. Uniformed cadres, known as Swayam Sevaks, assemble daily. According to the RSS annual report of 2019, there are more than 84,000 such shakas, of which 59,000 are held daily. Satinder Narayan Singh has been a Swayam Sevak since 1982. लेकिन जब मैं आया संघ की शाखा में और जब देखा वहां पर तो अच्छे-अच्छे लोग अच्छी-अच्छी बातें देशभक्ति की बातें महापुरुषों की जीवनियां अच्छे-अच्छे आपका सुभाषित अमृत वचन प्रेरणादायी गीते लघु कथाएं बड़ी कथाएं जिसमें जीवन का आदर्श छुपा रहता था यह देख करके फिर हम उसी में संघ का ही होकर के रह गए he organizes such RSS shakas every week to revive Hinduness amongst the youth of India and counter divisions. Sakha Sanskar Kendra hai. Waha par bhakti nirmana ka kaam hota hai. Jab Mughal aaye, to o atatai the. Hamara jo samaj tha, Hindu samaj tha, o bahut sahi sud samaj tha. अब आपको यही बता रहा हूँ ना कि जब हम किसी को भूखे नहीं सोने देते थे तो उसे हमारी स्थिति क्या रही होगी तो हम तो ये समझ ही नहीं पाए यहाँ के लोग कि हमारे साथ हो क्या रहा है कुछ 
गुंडे जिसको बोले मवाली कुछ प्रकृति के लोग बोले जिनमें संस्कार नहीं था वह लोग आ करके एक झुंड में इकट्ठा हो करके और हमारी संस्कृति को उन्होंने बर्बाद करने का प्रयास किया British India was divided in 1947. Pakistan was carved out as a Muslim country led by Muhammad Ali Jinnah. In response, the RSS wanted a Hindu nation. Instead, India chose secularism as part of its constitution under the leadership of Jawaharlal Nehru. When the Constitution of India was written between 1947 and 1950, which enshrined the secular nation where every person of whatever faith was equal, they said this is wrong. People of India are the Hindu people, so there should be a Hindu constitution for a Hindu rashtra, a Hindu nation. The partition of India angered the RSS. Writings in the Hindu Mahasabha and RSS newspapers, there's a very vituperative language used for Gandhi ji where he is sort of identified as the author of partition and somebody who appeases muslims muslim lover and in a language which virtually tells the people that he should be gotten rid of in one way or to jab ye sab hai nathuram godse ji ne dekha ki ye jitne bhi gandhi ji ke abhi abhi ke jo kal khand mein jo karj ho rahe hain wo sare hindu ke virodh mein hain kahin bhi hindu ke support mein koi bhi unka kaam nahi tha तब उनको ये लगा कि अब इनका जिंदा रहना इस हिंदू समाज के लिए भारत के लिए बहुत अहितकारी है। In 1948, RSS member Nathuram Godse assassinated Gandhi to avenge the creation of Pakistan. The death shook the entire world. Godse underwent a lengthy trial and was subsequently hanged. RSS units around the country celebrated. Mahatma Gandhi is killing so gleefully some were even handing out sweetmeat this outraged the government of India and Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel the home minister is the one who took the decision to ban the RSS for 2 years he only lifted the ban after 2 years when the RSS agreed to undertake no political activities and to remain a purely cultural organization Chatur Subaram Guru Despite the ban the RSS's Hindutva ideology grew over the years into the biggest volunteer organization in India. The Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sangh did not recognize the national flag of India for the next 52 years. हम नहीं चाह रहे थे कि देश का विभाजन हो हम तो किसी भी आज भी हम नहीं चाह रहे हैं आज भी देख रहे हैं हमारा लक्ष्य वही है अखंड भारत का जो हमसे किसी कारण से हमसे अलग हो गए उनको एक साथ मिलाने का लक्ष्य तो हम कैसे देश का विभाजन स्वीकार कर लेते As calls for a Hindu Rashtra rise India's democratic ideals are taking a hit. Sweden-based Videm Institute in its latest report on democracy labeled India an electoral autocracy. When you have a view which says that India will be a Hindu Rashtra which is what they want to call it where minorities are welcome to stay but it must be made clear to them that they're staying in a Hindu country and you have another view which is that India is for everyone there's very little give and take there in a sense polar opposites so where is the dialogue going to happen 14% or 200 million in India are still muslim by 2060 pew estimates there will be more muslims in india than anywhere else in the world dekhe musalmano ka to sankhya unke yojana ke anusar badha rahe unke man mein ek bhav har samay rehta hai ki jo मुसलमान नहीं है वो काफिर है वो चाहे क्रिश्चियन हो किसी भी धर्म के हो इसलिए उनका तो बस एक ही फॉर्मूला पर वो काम कर रहे हैं कि भाई या तो मुसलमान हो जाओ नहीं तो हम आपको समाप्त कर देंगे तो ये तो पूरे विश्व के लिए इसको चिंता करना चाहिए ये केवल भारत के हिंदू को ही चिंता करने का विषय नहीं है ये तो विश्व के मंच पर इसके बाद की चिंता हो क्योंकि वो जहाँ रह रहे हैं वहीं पर उनका अत्याचार है हिस्ट्री शोज that you need to weaponize against a particular religion or a community to create this level of hatred and this sort of right wing uh politics in india that has happened with muslims and islam bharat ko prem karne wale lok tantra ko prem karne wale to increase its impact 
the RSS has built close ideological links with members of the Bharatiya Janata Party. The RSS finally found a strong leader who embodied the same ideals as them. In 2020, the Supreme Court of India decided in favor of the long-held aspiration of the RSS. Prime Minister Modi inaugurated the Ram Temple on the site of the disputed Babri Mosque. The rise of Hindutva is now impacting other organs of the Indian state. A sharp rise in Hindutva has fueled a battle of narratives across India. Some newsrooms have chosen to operate along ideological differences. Sudarshan News is a Hindu nationalist news network that operates from Noida. <laughs> Suresh Chavhanke is its chairman and editor in chief. राष्ट्रवादी पत्रकारिता करना ये सपना था। ये सुदर्शन 2000 में जब गुजरात के दंगे हुए, 2002 के दंगे हुए, उसके दौरान हमने लगा कि मीडिया में हमारा कोई नहीं है, हमारा आवाज नहीं रखा जाता है, तो पत्रकारिता में आना चाहिए। राष्ट्र सर्वप्रथम ये जो सुदर्शन का नारा है, ये संग से आया हुआ इसका आधार भी संघ का जीवन दृष्टिकोण या संघ की विचारधारा आप आसान भाषा में कहना चाहे तो ये कह सकते हैं और कितना महत्वपूर्ण है मेरे जीवन में तो मुझे लगता है कि संघ अगर माइनस किया जाए तो शायद फिर सुरेश चौहान के में कुछ नहीं है The RSS ideologue hosts Bindas Bol arguably India's most controversial TV show its inflammatory content was dubbed insidious, rabid, and divisive propaganda by the Indian Supreme Court. On multiple occasions, Sudarshan News was found to be spreading fake news. In 2019, the channel broadcast an old video, which was morphed with slogans calling for the killings of RSS workers. In April 2017, Chavhanke was arrested for inciting communal hatred between Hindus and Muslims in India. In 2017, when I was arrested in the government, I was I was arrested in the government, I was I was I was I was on the 25th of August 2020, Sudarshan News broadcast that Muslim students were infiltrating Indian administrative services as UPSC Jihad. We know from the kind of advertising that, say, a channel like Sudarshan TV gets that uh, they have government backing. Media which is aligned to the government has all the protection it needs. And they enjoy this protection despite clearly violating broadcasting laws. TV channels are not allowed to use media, to use their channel, to spread hatred against any section of the population or to target Muslims or... But Sudarshan TV 
does it virtually every day. India's Press Freedom Index now ranks 142 of 180 countries, four spots behind South Sudan and three behind Myanmar. Social media abuse in India has made matters worse. Facebook allegedly allowed RSS accounts to spread hatred against Muslims in India. Mr. Modi and the RSS have used Hindutva to polarize society, to divide, to divert the attention of people. Uh, this is very clear. And uh, this has been the agenda of the Sangh Parivar from the start. And uh, uh, the fact that Mr. Modi is in power today now, the fact that he won a second election, is testimony to his ability to convince some section of the people, a major section of the people, that they should support him. One such Hindutva campaign, run by Sudarshan News, was the Love Jihad campaign. It's a conspiracy theory that Muslims are luring Hindu brides with the aim of conversion and eventually national domination. I have seen a lot of episodes in the Love Jihad. Love Jihad is a very good thing. Land Jihad, Love Jihad, UPSC Jihad. कई प्रकार के जिहादें, जन्मपंजीकरण जिहाद, ये सारे वो जिहादें जो हिंदुस्तान को गजवाए हिंद बनाने के दिशा में किए जा रहे, पूर्व नियोजित शरीयत रहे, नया कुछ नहीं है, उसमें से लव जिहाद ये केवल भारत में नहीं हो रहा है, आपको पता होगा कि यूरोप में भी, वहाँ के एसेंबली में भी इसकी चर्चा चार-चार बीबीआ करने के बाद भी बढ़ने की गति जो है वो कम लगती है तो दूसरे की बेटियों को लाके उसको फिर मुसलमान बनाके संख्या बढ़ाने का जो प्लान है योजना है गजवाई हिंद है उसलिए लव जहाद किया जाता है। Such television campaigns are watched by millions across the rural countryside. I think the media is criminal. These sections of the media have played a terrible part in promoting what I would call outright fascism. They are fascists sitting in their studio, profiling people, making it us versus them, using every communal, every uh, Muslim thing to have a story, or looking for stories to create a cult of the great leader, to, to win brownie points with the regime. It had a great impact on minorities living in India, in particular Muslims. A 22-year-old Hindu woman, Muskan, and her Muslim husband, Rashid, went to register their marriage in the town of Muradabad. Instead, the Muslim groom ended up in jail, and the young woman in a state-run shelter home. Credit for this is taken by RSS activist Vijay Kant Shauhan, who calls himself the Lion of India. He's a one-man Hindutva army and roams the streets of Shaharanpur. Muslims are the whole world of the whole world. It's not only the Hindu society, it's not only the Hindu society, it's not only the Hindu society. It's the whole world of the whole world, the whole child, the whole child, माता या बहने सब परेशान हैं दुखी हैं क्योंकि पूरी दुनिया के अंदर आज जो आतंक इस्लाम ने फैला रखा है वो धरती की किसी और विचारधारा नहीं फैला रखा है। नमस्कार मैं हूँ सुरेश चवान के आप देख रहे बिंदास बोल और आज के बिंदास बोल में हम लव जिहाद। विजय कांत जोइंड द बाश रंग दाल, अ पर्टिकुलरली � जब तक धरती पे आखरी काफिर जिंदा है, यानी कि आखरी हिंदू जिंदा है, आखरी इंसान जिंदा है, तब तक इनका ये धर्म युद्ध जिहाद जारी रहेगा, और इस जिहाद के अंदर जो भी व्यक्ति, जो भी मुसलमान लड़ता हुआ मर जाएगा, या मारा जाएगा, शहीद होगा, वो जन्नत में बहत्तर हिंदू लड़कियों से that he carries out an awareness campaign 
to identify the enemies of India. जैसे ही आपने जानकारी और पूछी इनसे कि आपके आसपास प्रसिद्ध मंदिर कौन सा है आपकी मम्मी का नाम क्या है आपकी बहन का नाम क्या है आपके चाचा का नाम क्या है आपकी मौसी का नाम क्या है आपके इस से कौन है आप गायत्री में सुनाइए इतनी देर में केवल एक मिनट के अंदर वो डगमगा जाएगा उसके चेहरे के हाव भाव से आपको पता लग जाएगा कि ये हिंदू नहीं है ये लव जहादी गुंडा है जो आपको छल कपड़ दे अपने योजना तरीके से शिकार बनाने आया इन इंडिया मोस्ट पॉपुलर स्टेट उत्तर प्रदेश The Hindu nationalist BJP government has endorsed the fight against love jihad. The Uttar Pradesh prohibition of unlawful conversion of religion ordinance was passed in 2020. I don't think anybody is safe in Uttar Pradesh, Hindu, woman, man, dog, cow, but certainly there's a sense in which there has been more effort put into making cows feel secure. So yes, they are free to be Muslims. Nobody's stopping them from that. but they have a price to pay for being muslims in this society and it's made clear to them that they understand that this is a hindu country love jihad band karo band karo band karo love jihad band karo this division is reaching a climax point in states like rajasthan na kisi ki parwa karte jihadon ki main apni gaadi leke aur apne pure karyakartao ke sath main go mata ko shaam ko uski suraksha ke liye mera jumma hai उसके लिए हमको कुछ भी करना पड़ेगा हम करेंगे इंडिया प्राइड्स इट सेल्फ as the world's biggest democracy but that status is now being questioned india has now been classified as an electoral autocracy sweden based vdem institute claims that restrictions on multiple facets of democracy has increased pressure on human rights groups intimidation of journalists and activists and produced a spate of attacks especially against muslims One reason is the so-called saffronization of India's secular constitution. Hindus consider cows sacred. Several BJP-ruled states have introduced stricter cow protection laws. For Muslims who trade cattle, that means growing trouble. Strict cow protection laws have led to a rise of the Gau Rakshaks or cow protection volunteers across India. From 2016 until the end of 2020, over 50 fatalities have been reported as a result of lynching or mob violence. following suspected cow slaughter or trade directed basically at muslims portraying them as beef eaters and cow slaughterers you've never before had gau rakshaks organizations that are set up to protect the cow and they protect the cow by killing human beings by lynching them so it's not a communal riot as the government would proudly tell you but it is certainly an atmosphere of hate that affects individuals and leads to lynchings India's march to Hinduize its secular constitution took another turn in 2019 when the Citizenship Act was amended by the BJP government. The CAA meant all persecuted minorities arriving in India would now be granted Indian citizenship except for Muslims. It was the first time that religion was overtly used as a criterion for citizenship under Indian law. you can see that the bjp clearly wants to upturn the kind of india that our forefathers and mothers fought for this is very clear and they are trying to pursue that agenda at breakneck speed because perhaps they realize uh, that uh, they may not win another election so you see this in jammu kashmir you see this with the citizenship amendment act you see this with various other laws that they have passed which they know would be very difficult to reverse once they are done protests erupted across India's capital Delhi demanding the amendments be repealed 
Protesters from all walks of life blocked roads to voice their concerns. Amid this tense environment, the Delhi elections were held, where the BJP expected to win, banking on its Hindu vote bank. The Bharatiya Janata Party lost an election in Delhi and lost it badly. And they had made it a very, very high-pitched election where the rhetoric was again all about Muslims and nationalism. And there was one particular individual in the BJP, a gentleman by the name of Kapil Mishra, who was particularly smarting, who went even after the loss, went around making threats, went around saying he's going to fix this one and fix that one. And let's, let's not uh, forget the scale of the threats that was made by BJP leaders during the riots. <laughs> BJP's Kapil Mishra called for Delhi police to clear the roads of anti-CAA protesters. You can't just block the roads of common citizens. That should not be done by anyone, anywhere. There, in democracy, everyone has right. There is a right to protest. So I demanded that my road need to be cleared. I need to go to work. Uh, people who see controversy in my statement, every single criticism, every single blame, that's a medal on my chest. So I feel very happy about it that they blame me, they criticize me. 24th February 2020. After Mishra's ultimatum, violence erupted in northeast Delhi. Hindu mobs unleashed multiple waves of bloodshed, property destruction, and rioting. Mohammad Nasir's neighborhood became the center of pitched battles. जैसे मैं अपनी गली के नजदीक पहुंचा तो एकदम भीड़ ने अटैक कर दिया और नारेबाजी हो रही थी बहुत जबरदस्त जय श्री राम हिंदू हिंदुस्तान मुल्ला बालू पाकिस्तान तो मैंने कहा हम तो भाई पड़ोसी हैं हमारे हमें तो पहचानते हैं हमारे साथ तो कोई हो सकता गलत व्यवहार ना करे क्योंकि ये अक्सर रैलियां तो निकलती रहती हैं इनकी तो मैंने उसको ज्यादा सीरियस ना लेते हुए जैसे मैं आगे बढ़ा और भीड़ ने अटैक कर दिया और मेरे ऊपर गोली चला दी और जो गोली मेरी आंख के नीचे लगी और मैं वहीं गिर गया गिर गया तो खून चारों तरफ बिखरा हुआ था वो मेरे पास देखे उन्होंने कि इसका काम हो गया फिर वो चले गए जब मुझे थोड़ा सा होश आया तो मैं उठा उठकर अपनी गली में गया ऑफ द 53 पीपल किल्ड टू थर्ड्स वर मुस्लिम्स हु वर शॉट स्लैश्ड विद रिपीटेड ब्लोज और सेट ऑन फायर Along with Nasir, some 1,000 Muslims sought shelter in a relief camp on the fringes of Delhi. वहाँ जो ये 100-150 दुकानों में आग लगाई गई और जो लोगों को मारा गया, तो जिनकी दुकानें लूटी वो भी मुसलमान, जिनकी दुकानें जली वो भी मुसलमान, जिनको मारा गया वो भी मुसलमान, और जो आरोपी, जिनको आरोपी बनाया गया वो भी मुसलमान। मतलब सब कुछ हमें ही फांसा गया हर तरीके से एक डर दिखाने के लिए Lawyer Mahmoud Paracha took up Nasir's case. He's now representing many Muslims killed or injured during the Delhi violence. The police was threatening people not to make complaints with names, not to name RSS BJP office bearers, not to name police officers who were directly involved in the violence, throwing bombs, shooting people, uh, burning houses, burning uh, shops. And all these things, activities were being done. And there are so many video visuals also, which have been reported in uh, on a large scale. But surprisingly, out of 700 uh, odd FIRs, 95% or 96% do not name anyone. Upon Nasir's complaint, the Delhi police were fined 25,000 Indian rupees for mishandling his case. This attempt to use religion to identify an Indian citizen is having serious repercussions in other states. As part of the Citizenship Amendment Law, states are now charting a National Register of Citizens, or the NRC. In the state of Assam, even long-term migrants from neighboring Bangladesh now have to prove their citizenship 
in a long and elaborate process. For NRC, only two documents are required. First thing is that any document prior to 1971, that cutoff date, any document, might be the land document or voters list, whatever might be, any document of the concerned person, that means my linkage with my father, maybe my birth certificate or my school certificate where my father's name is there, these two documents would have sufficed. But with regard to foreigners tribunal, these two documents won't suffice. There I have to prove the continuity of my citizenship. This document, the two documents are required only to be there, my name is there in the NRC. But to, in order to prove a person's citizenship, before the foreigner's tribunal, it's a cumbersome doc procedure. But it's turned into a predominantly anti-Muslim exercise. Illegal Hindus who can't prove their ties to India will still be granted Indian citizenship. Muslims who can't will be deported. Ultimately, a major portion of the two million residents of Assam excluded from the list were Muslim. Any indigenous Muslim community people, they are being booked under the Foreigners Act. Why the Muslim community? Because their surname, you cannot make out, no? If they would have written their Hindu surname, you can easily make out they belong to certain community. Since they are Muslim, so from their surname, you cannot make out. So the indigenous Muslim are facing, they are being booked by the Foreigners Act. So definitely I'll see the fabric of secularism is being targeted. Foreigner tribunals are sending thousands of illegal Muslim migrants to be locked up across six detention camps set up by the government. The Matia Detention Center in Assam is one such facility. With a capacity to house 3,000 declared foreigners, it's a transit facility before illegal Indians are sent back to Bangladesh. Thirty-six-year-old Simran Nisha's husband received a notice in 2019 summoning him to a foreigner's tribunal in Guwahati. Her husband, Shohidol Islam, was jailed on suspicion that he was a foreigner residing illegally in India. Their family had migrated from Bangladesh to India before 1971 but since then had been naturalized and registered as Indian citizens. Despite months of legal procedures, her husband was declared as a foreigner and locked up in a detention center. Inhuman conditions at the detention centers have repeatedly been highlighted by several human rights activists and civil society groups. Some 29 declared foreigners have reportedly died during their detention since 2009. With the possibility of Muslims being excluded from Indian citizenship, is the project of a Hindu Rashtra nearing completion. Oh, 
after the break, we meet activists trying to win back the secular ideals of India. Hinduism is the largest religion in India. According to the 2011 census, 966 million people identify themselves as Hindu, representing 80% of the country's population. To win this Hindu vote bank, some politicians have equated Hindutva with Indian nationalism, dividing the country between nationalists and anti-national forces. If you are a Muslim and you're called anti-national, and it's suggested that your loyalties are with Pakistan, then it's much more dangerous because Muslims did go to Pakistan. Pakistan was an Islamic homeland. And for Muslims to say that their grandparents or their great grandparents had a choice and they believed in secularism and they stayed on in India cuts no ice. It's therefore a way of reminding Muslims that this is Hindustan and they don't really belong here. The US Commission on International Religious Freedom recommended that India be put on a State Department Freedom of Religion blacklist. It added that Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government promoted Hindu nationalist policies resulting in systematic, ongoing and egregious violations of religious freedom. India is the only country where every denomination of every known or unknown religion in the world can exist and they can still practice their method of worship. And India is again the only country where even atheists can openly say that they are, they are atheists. They don't believe in any religion, they don't believe in any God, they could say this. So this is the characteristic of this country. And therefore those who lecture India as far as uh, religious freedom is concerned, should look at other countries and then come and start lecturing on us. The rise of Hindutva has had a marked impact on Indian politics. Despite India's 200 million Muslim minority, just 22 Muslim politicians have been elected in the 545 strong parliament. The reason why there are few Muslim candidates is because even the secular parties no longer find it feasible to put up Muslim candidates because the non-Muslims will not vote for them, which was not the case earlier. Many non-Muslims or Hindus are unwilling to vote for a candidate who is a Muslim. So in that case, we should consider, we should start talking in India about proportional representation. 14 states across India have failed to elect a single Muslim politician in the last 25 years. But the Muslim community in Assam is trying to change those numbers. Twenty-seven-year-old social activist Ashraful Hussain is a local politician. He's seen how India's secular credentials have eroded with amendments to the Citizenship Act in Assam. बहुत सारे harassment भी किया हुआ कोई ने गाय बकरी सब कुछ बेच के साइकिल से लेके नौका तक बेच के वो एनआरसी के गियरिंग में दूर रहा था आसाम की इस तरह से उस तरह तक 300-400 किलोमीटर दूरी दूरी तक उनको सिटीजनशिप की कागजात लेके वहाँ पे हाजिर होना था फिर भी इन लोगों ने चार पांच बार सौ बार दस बार तक लोगों ने यहाँ से यहाँ तक गया लेकिन क्यों जब हमारे सिटीजनशिप के सर्टिफिकेट मिला लेकिन फाइनली इन लोगों ने ऐसे एक टूल बनाया ऐसे एक मैकेनिज्म बनाया जिसके जरिए जो सही हिंदुस्तानी हैं उनको भी नाम एनआरसी से हटा दिया गया ये मैं यकीन के साथ ये मैं पूरा जिम्मेदारी के साथ कह सकता हूँ क्योंकि मैं ये पूरा प्रोसेस में लोगों के साथ खड़ा था कोई साल बहुत ये लास्ट काफी यार तो आज साढ़े उन्नीस लाख लोगों को एनआरसी से हटा दिया गया 
Asher Fools started traveling across the country to document families bereaved by mob lynching, hate violence, and evictions. He focused on helping uneducated migrants in filling National Register of Citizens forms. Ashraful called his group the Samvidan Satis, or Friends of the Constitution. His community work paid off. In 2021, Ashraful finally became a member of the Assam Legislative Assembly. और बीजेपी की सरकार चल रही है मुझे लगता नहीं कि पूरा देश हिंदुत्व हो गया इन लोगों का पॉलिसी बिल्कुल हिंदुत्व है लोगों को रेडिकलाइज करने की कोशिश है लेकिन ये नाकाम होगा अगर हम जो एंटी बीजेपी जो सेकुलराइजिंग पक्ष इतना पार्टी तो एकदम एक क्वालिशन कर सकते तो बैक इन दिल्ली अ यूथ मूवमेंट इज टेकिंग रूट टू चेंज द नैरेटिव अगेंस्ट हिंदुत्ववाद डिवाइसिव पॉलिटिक्स Sanjay Rajura, Barun Grover, and Rahul Ram, who form the comedy collective AC TC Democracy, aren't afraid of highlighting India's democratic flaws. Basically, we grew up like Kashmiris, and my father was a hockey player, and he was playing right wing. He came to my uncle, and my father gave him a pipe of wash basin, a plastic one. He said, "Give it to him." चोट उतनी लगेगी लेकिन पता नहीं चलेगा दिखेगा नहीं तो मेरे हमें हमें पता नहीं था क्या मेरे फादर ने मुझे वो तो ठीक है नहीं है क्या चीज मुझे कहा ये है सॉफ्ट हंड्रेड का यू नो मेकिंग फन ऑफ समबडी बाय पॉइंटिंग आउट लॉजिकल फ्लॉज एंड डूइंग सो इन अ फनी मैनर इज आई थिंक अ वेरी वेरी इफेक्टिव मींस ऑफ गेटिंग द मैसेज अक्रॉस द दी सो कॉल्ड स्ट्रांग मैन आर एक्चुअली very weak man they are scared of being made fun of they are scared of uh, uh, being lampooned with press freedom under question their online shows have become quite the rage amongst the youth of india their shows have garnered millions of views on youtube the trio want to question what they see as a rise in intolerance and hindu majoritarianism under prime minister modi's government the majority is in danger danger from minorities which is a ridiculous logic but it's a matter of belief and and in a, in a country like india where, where you know lot many people a uh, lot of people have have been left behind in terms of education and development we have a huge chunk of population who is willing to believe anything movements questioning power are slowly reviving india's multi-faith multi-ethnic society such movements have cut across lines of identity caste class region political affiliation and religion i would say not only has the majority of india not rejected secular pluralism but i would still argue a majority of hindus hasn't we in india are not a melting pot we are a thali a thali is a big platter with a number of dishes and different bowls because each dish is in a different bowl it doesn't necessarily flow into the next but they belong together on the same platter and they combine on your palate to give you a satisfying meal whether secularism can maintain its hold as a defining ideology for the country will depend on bjp's electoral success in the future but the battle to redefine indian nationalism through the prism of secularism and challenging hindu majoritarianism has begun <laughs> <laughs>